Well, good uh, morning, good afternoon, good night, uh, depending on what exact part of the space-time continuum this thing that the consciousness that is experiencing itself calls I is uh, experiencing as the thing that we call a moment right now. Whoo! Hope it's not morning, kids. That's a little deep. But this topic is deep. This is, uh, and I want to apologize to you for taking so long to make the next video here. Um, uh, I don't. I was going to say my students, but as my quote students know, uh, I am taking a little bit of a hiatus from coaching, and I was going to also take a bit of a hiatus from making these videos. But um, I kind of thought, you know, I've got new subscribers, and uh, it's also like I can tell my students like I'm not going to be doing coaching for a while. But I can't tell people that are hoping that my videos pop up here. Like, I know that feeling, you know. There's only so many good content producers, and if you subscribe to mine, then it sort of means that you must think that I'm one of them. So I don't feel like I'm being... Yeah, wow. That's, uh, that's rambly. Moving right along. Uh, decided to probably just not do poker videos quite as often. Um, but I'm going to do my very best to get at least one every three weeks out. And this is about the three-week mark. So um, I don't want anybody to have to wait a month if they're actually like, oh, cool, some real poker information that's uh, worth watching and it's free and all of that. Um, and I enjoy doing this. But, uh, yeah, here we go. This is, I, I love the idea of debunking poker mythology. I think of myself, like, as a poker coach, that is what... I have to do that is the number one thing that I have to do is I have to get rid of this conventional wisdom and I'm gonna air quote wisdom because there's so much um, nonsense out there there's so much uh, I think there's so much confirmation bias inside the if I could say like the strategic culture of Nolan Holden poker but there's also this idea of Darwinian evolution or survival of the fittest that applies to the way that people think about uh, poker strategy. And if a strategy is not, if adopting the wrong ideas is going to uh, cause you to lose or put you in situations where it's obvious that it's costing you money, those aren't going to survive very long. Uh, but if you have this idea of, uh, like a, even a false idea, if it gets you to the right decision like 70 plus percent of the time um, and then it gets you into a decision that at least could be something like okay a very high percent of the time then it's really hard to ever notice that that's the problem and um, so this and also the idea of, of protection betting has been around since probably the very first publication of anything resembling a strategy book on, or a strategy anything, strategy media, in no limb to hold them. So, I mean, it's not, it's not that hard to see why it would be something that's uh, persisted, and it has persisted. And, you know, there's, there's ideas, too, like the continuation back that are pretty persistent, but that persists because whether the people that really started the seabedding idea understood exactly what was going on there or if they didn't, um, I mean, it just actually is a good idea to see that pretty often. Um, but I don't think that there's the same thing here. And I also want to say, I did a lot of research uh, for this exact video, and I normally don't do that, but I put a lot of time into studying this. This is something that's really near and dear to me. Um, this is, a, I mean, if there's one thing, well, there's a couple things. There's a couple things. But this is one of the toughest things to try to get people that are um, paying you to make them better at thinking. I mean, that's what it is, right? Like, when you're coaching somebody at poker, you're trying to, well, when I'm coaching people at poker, I'm not trying to teach them a preset formula. I'm trying to think of, well, I'm trying to get them to think better. A uh, more efficient thought process. That's the idea. Like a, I want them to think better. And this is like one of the just grand illusions of no limit hold'em. And I don't know why. And people get so inflamed and like so like, 
there's so much emotion invested into this idea, and I didn't understand that, so I started doing some research on it. Um, and so I actually, I'm going to change slides just because I want to move through this material. Uh, but I want to say in the research, it wasn't that easy to even find a definition for protection bedding that had some kind of a consensus, which was no surprise to me, man. I'm like, I don't, I think the other reason that people don't figure this out is because there isn't even a definition for it. So, I mean, it doesn't really mean anything. So even if, so even the people that think they believe in it don't actually believe in it. Not, not the way that you believe in, um, I don't know, like heat or, uh, I don't know, that's a weird example, but VCRs or DVD players if you're younger. Like, what is it? it when people hear me say that I don't believe in protection betting, I think sometimes they think that it's like I'm saying it the same way that I'd say I don't believe in racism or I don't believe in violence or I don't believe in, you know, Marxism or whatever. Uh, but I'm not, I don't mean it that way. Not far from it. I mean, just far from it. I don't mean it. I, I mean nothing of the sort. I mean, I literally don't believe in it. it the same way I don't believe in the Easter Bunny. The same way I don't believe in uh, Santa Claus. You know, I, I don't believe in uh, black snow and uh, square circles. I, I don't believe in the marital status of the number seven. You know, it's that kind of a thing. I don't believe in the self or the, well, I think that there, there's a lot of illusions. You know, there's a lot of illusions. And one of the things that you have to do to get better at anything that involves thinking is you have to strive to see through the, the more persistent illusions. You have to really work at that. It's not, now some of them are clear, some of them are easy. Um, but some of them are not so easy. There's a lot of really interesting magic tricks, like sleight of mind magic tricks that you'll see when you start looking into this subject. Um, but the closest thing I can find to a consensus definition would be making a bet when you have a strong but vulnerable hand. That's betting for protection. And man, that's just such a convoluted thing. And, and we're going to get to that. We're going to get into this. Um, so my question is, what are you protecting? Um, if you're making a, a, a bet for protection, what, what is it that you're trying to protect? My hand. Well, I mean, yeah, you said that, right? But what, what about your hand? Like, what are you protecting exactly? My equity? That, that doesn't mean anything. That, that literally has no translation that does not involve the word equity. You're protecting my, well, I mean, you can, you can make up a translation, but it doesn't mean anything in and of itself. My just is a word I use to represent the person that I think I am. Equity is how often I'm going to win a showdown if the hands just rolled out, if there was no betting. If all betting ceased and we just went to showdown. Um, or you could maybe even define it just as uh, what, how often you would win or how often you would have 100% chance of winning at showdown or winning a showdown by the time 5th Street comes out. It'd be something like that in the and what does it mean to protect that, that definition of my equity? Like, what does protect mean? It means, like, to stop something from harming it, right? So, I mean, if we say protect my equity, it means, like, stop me from folding. I mean, it doesn't mean anything like what... Yeah, this is really hard to explain, and I guess that's one of the reasons that it's such a persistent illusion. Um... So I want to try this. What does the word protect mean? I mean, you could say like, well, protecting my hand means this, and people think of protection betting like that. But let's just take the word protect. What are you doing when you try to protect your hand? What, what, do, what does just the protection part mean? I don't think, I don't think it, it, it doesn't mean anything. Does it mean to get your opponent to fold? Is that how you're protecting your hand by making your opponent fold? Well, we already have a, a way to think of that. We, we just call that fold equity. Um, and I, I don't think we need to differentiate between 
times when we think we might have the best but vulnerable hand and times when we don't think that, you know? Well, maybe you don't know. But we'll get to that, too. But I'm going to ask you to really, like, hang on to your hats here. And really, I mean, just really think about this and follow along. Um, I'm trying to get to a, a page that's a little less... Uh, here we go. Here we go. This is not at all controversial, right? I mean, there are only two points where you can make money in poker. Um, in the game of No Limit Hold them specifically, there, you make money when there's one live player and you're it, or when you get your hand to showdown and it wins. It's the best hand at showdown. Um, and if your strategy does not reflect that, then your strategy is wrong. Strategy as such does reflect that. So the, the word strategy implies that. If, if, if I can't, if you wrote down your strategy, if you had a very specific, like, if you wrote, like, a, a thesis on the strategy of playing poker, and you wanted to talk about protection then, and you put that part, you know what, just, here's what I want to say. If you wrote a thesis on poker strategy, but you never said what the rules of the game are, I ought to be able to read your strategy and derive from the reading of your strategy all of the rules of poker, or at least at, at a minimum, the object of the game. And if I can't do that, then your strategy sucks, or your thesis sucks, or it's, it's, or it's incomplete, or it's, it's broken. If there's something very wrong with it. It's not as right as it could be at the very least. And I would just say that some of these things, guys, like, if you've never thought of them before, that is understandable. But if somebody just, like, shows this to you, and you are willfully blind to it, then that's ego. It's got to be. I don't know what else it could be. Um, but I, yeah, I wanted to, I was looking for something that wasn't all that uh, emotionally charged, a slide to leave this on while I just kind of read some excerpts from some stuff I found. Like, I, I was uh, looking up the thread on 2 plus 2 and reading that, and um, I've got a couple other things. I don't... <laughs> so I found this, uh, uh, it is an illusion slide with this very, uh, like, not very controversial couple things here. And then I, like, make the most controversial statements of the entire video, sorry. Um, I'm very, like... I'm very seriously frustrated about this. You know, I mean, I, I don't know if I sound frustrated. I probably sound more frustrated than I normally do when I make a video. This is very, um, this is as emotionally charged as a subject could be for me. Um, I mean, this is a, I, I don't think I'm going to get into all that. But um, just suffice it to say, it's important. This is important. And it's important to me. And I try not to be very emotional. Like, I try not to get too uh, stressed out or too happy. or I try to stay even keel. Like that's a real big part of what I try to do as a human being. But this, is, uh, this has been a real test for me. And that might sound silly, but if you're a poker coach, you probably would be, like, you'd understand it more. I mean, you, you have a lot of emotions invested in people as a coach. I mean, it's a really, um, if you've ever taught anybody anything, you know what, or especially if you're in a situation where you're like, I don't know, I've, uh, I've been a uh, karate instructor at one time. I think there were some similarities there. I mean, not like for a living. Um, and then I had like an MMA uh, club that I was part. But regardless, like w when you're in a, like a, a mentor position, there's this, um, what did uh, Floyd call it? Transference, I think. You have this transference. Um, so there's this relationship that it just can't help but become like a very familial, familiar, familial, whatever, a very similar to that of a family relationship. It's just, it's in the DNA of the, of the, of the matter. Anyway, God, I think we've got to change slides again. Hopefully I can find one that isn't so emotionally charged as some just obvious statements. Okay, yeah, here we go. Let's stop here while I read a couple things like it's not just me or my guys that are emotionally charged by this 
you can read the debates on any poker forum. And they're debates, and a lot of it is just semantics. It really is. I mean, a tremendously high percent of it is semantics. And I think that that is another thing that helps to allow this illusion to persist. Is because it's so easy to just do some hand waving to say, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we're both doing about the same things, and we might not agree on the exact definitions, but whatever. I mean, this is a semantics problem. But it isn't always a semantics problem. Uh, sometimes it's a real problem. And the real problem is, is that it's going to become a roadblock between you and what you can't see now. Like if you're a student and you're learning and you're coming up the ranks and you're starting to win at the micro stage, you're trying to be good players, um, you, you might not have the vision to see. I mean, you almost can't have the vision to see how this is going to come up later on when you're dealing with like serious math concepts or serious logic concepts and all at once this idea of, uh, of protection betting it doesn't just not help anymore it's actually in stark contrast to what you need to be doing to construct ranges efficiently and effectively and if you've got this if it's already so ingrained in your, I would say brain, but I, I don't know if that's right. It's like ingrained in the way that you feel about poker, the emotional, like the, the feelings of it. If it's already that way now, if you allow this thing to stay, if you allow this idea to stay inside your mind and inside your conceptualization of the ideas, um, of no limit hold'em strategy, like the way we would express it formally. Formally, if we had like a completed game theory optimal solution, if if you allow this thing to stay, it's gonna be. I want to say like a cancer, but that's a little bit exaggerated because it's not. It's gonna just be. It's going to come back to bite you in the ass, and you're going to have to deal with it eventually. So let's call it like a like a um, like a sty. No, let's call it a uh, um, a tumor, but one that's maybe not cancerous because it's not going to destroy you. But it is growing, and it's better that we get rid of it now than we get to a point where we're ready to take the next step in our logic, and we can't take that step because we're still attached to this tumor, something like that. But I, I want to read... Um, this is just a, 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 and this, I, I guess I should give, uh, I don't know how the laws and all this stuff work, but uh, it is a, a disclaimer. I mean, I, I guess I don't even know who wrote this. Um, shit. So, uh, let's see, Rob? Shit, I don't know, man. Well, hopefully I don't get uh, hurt too bad. It, it's whoever writes the Exceptional Poker Newsletter. So, um, I, I'll give uh, complete uh, rights and uh, all of that. I'll go through all of that as soon as I figure out who this is. I'll leave it in the uh, in the things at the bottom here. Okay, so uh, this is called, uh, this is one of myriad, like there's so many of these types of things out there. Um, betting to protect question mark. Don't do it or just unsubscribe. Betting to protect, don't do it or just unsubscribe. The myth of betting to protect your hand. I mean, that's an emotionally charged thing, right? Like, or just unsubscribe. That's insane. You know, that's not that's not normal. Why is this thing so emotionally charged? Well, we'll get to that too. Um, I post. Okay, so here's this little excerpt of a newsletter here. Uh, back in issue number 40 of the Exceptional Poker Newsletter, I posted a short article on why, quote, betting to protect, end quote, against draws is not smart poker. Wow, did I strike a nerve. I've subsequently received half a dozen emails and questions on the subject. Some were polite and respectful, but some weren't. Here's an example. That I'm, I'm quoting stuff. Here's an example. Quote, you obviously, so this is somebody responding to 
the guy that writes this newsletter. You obviously don't understand the reasons Tibet and Texas hold them. When you have top pair, I'm sorry, when you have top pair hand and your opponent has a straight draw that can beat yours, you have to bet to protect your hand against the straight. Read any book on poker and it will tell you this is why you need to bet. I don't think you understand poker as well as you think you do if you tell us not to bet to protect against draws. I am going to unsubscribe from your newsletter because of this bad advice. Wow, right? Okay, I, I think uh, we'll just go ahead here and uh, I wanted to read this part. The only thing it could possibly mean to be good at something is it means to be efficient. That's the same thing. I defy anybody to come up with anything else it could ever mean. If you think that it means something other than efficient to say that somebody's good at something, then you're, you either don't know what the word efficient means or you haven't thought about it long enough. Think about it real hard. That is what it means to be good at a thing. Efficiency and good at are like the same. You can use those interchangeably. If we have to construct ranges. So this is the thing. There are some spots, and I, I know I'm bouncing around here, but I, this is an important slide, but I want to change slides. So if you can bet to protect your range, then go ahead and bet, right? Don't call it protection. Just call it a range bet. But sometimes you can't bet your entire range. And when you cannot bet your entire range, if you have to construct a betting range, then we have to do that for some reasons. We, there has to be some reason that we bet these hands, but not those hands. So if we have to construct ranges with some hands at bet and some hands at check, then we want to do that according to some principle, some idea, something that makes sense. Okay, so we're moving on here, but I, I want to finish this little excerpt. I think this is pretty damn interesting. Oh, and range efficiency would be that principle. Okay, so you obviously don't understand your big or dummy kind of a response here. Okay, um, and I am going to unscribe from your newsletter because of this bad advice. Okay, and then he, the, the guy that writes the newsletter says, Uh, I'm sorry you're leaving the list, but I respectfully disagree with your statement about betting to protect your hand. You should never bet in poker to protect your hand, just as you should never bet in poker to gather information about your opponent's hands. These two things, protection and information, are nice side benefits of betting, but they should never be the primary reason that you make a better or a raise. The only two reasons you bet are A, for value, B, as a bluff. Sometimes we bet as a middle ground combination of these things, like a semi-bluff, but we never ever bet for the reason of protecting our hand. Doing so is dumb poker, and I promise it's costing you money. Let me explain why this is so with, with some escalating hand examples. Okay, then we've got over pair against pair equals value. And yeah, okay, so big long thing. I, I guess I'm not going to read this whole thing. There, there was another one, though, that I wanted. This is, okay, this is quicker. And this is completely different person a completely different thing and it's not the only ones I can find. Um, then we have, um, uh, we sometimes hear an expert say that, uh, this is in poker news, uh, under live events, okay, um, on pokernews.com. So we bet, no, we sometimes hear an expert say that a player has bet to protect his hand. To some extent this may simply be a sloppy semantics problem. He might really mean, quote, he has a value bet opportunity here, and his bet will charge his opponent for the right to chase him. End quote. This is more awkward phrasing, uh, so experts often use the shortcut phrase. The problem with the, quote, bet to protect, end quote, meme, is that it plants an incorrupt concept in the minds of many players. In reality, betting rarely actually protects our hand. Does a bet protect us against a superior combo? Not often. Do we want inferior combos to fold to our value bets? No, we want them to call. Are we protecting when they call? No. But we make more money when they do. Uh, he goes on to talk about locking bets and things like that, kind of uh, taking a similar stance that I'm taking. Now, I didn't read any of this, guys, so I just want to make sure you understand. I'm not reiterating something. I'm not like, this isn't something I figured out by reading somebody else's something. It is just, 
you cannot help but get here eventually if you just stick with it. Just stay with thinking about poker. You will eventually stop believing in protection. Or you'll give up on the problem. Because it'll, or you'll come up with like a weird language tricks. That's your options. Those are your options. Um, like you're going to start playing a weird language game that nobody can quite understand, including yourself, and you're going to feel weird about it. You're going to give up on it, or you're going to, I mean, you're either going to give up on the poker strategy, give up on the idea of betting for protection, or you're going to have to come up with a very, you're going to have to do some serious mental semantics gymnastics to keep this word in play. Um, but listen, this, this idea, the problem with the bet, like I'm not sure about the charging opponents thing. I mean, I guess that kind of can make sense, but um, again, it's just, it, it's, that's, that is a semantics thing. Um, but this idea that he says here, that the thing that he cites, the problem with the bet to protect meme is that it plants an incorrect concept in the minds of many players. That is super true. Yeah, he starts off saying, like, to some extent, this may simply be sloppy semantics. This may be a sloppy semantics problem. Uh, but the problem is that it, it actually does plant an incorrect concept in the minds of players that want to understand poker. That's the real problem, is that it's, there is a model. There is a real model that you can really use to understand no limit the hold them strategy, and this isn't part of it. Protection is just, it simply is not part of the model. Um, it doesn't add anything, and it takes things away. That's the initial reason I want my students to get, just to dispense with it immediately. But it is worse than that. That it is there is going to come a point in time when you're going to have to choose between this protection concept and understanding more clearly than you otherwise could. So like you're going to come to some point where you are going to reach a you're going to reach a spot where your poker knowledge sidewalk will end. You're going to come to a wall that you can't get around, and this is the wall. And I want to warn you about this before you come anywhere near it. This is, you just don't need this. What you need is range efficiency. You need to use the best tool for the job. You need to reach this, like, utopian range society. It's like, that's all there is to the game, guys. It's like sometimes, you know, you, you can just exploit the shit out of your opponent. But if you don't, have that opportunity, or, or if you don't know what balanced strategies look like, you might not even know when they're unexploitable. Um, and most of the time, you should have hands that bat, hands that check, right? I mean, hands that raise or whatever. But if you're the aggressor, you're going to want to have hands that check back the flop as pre-flop raise, or hands that bet the flop. You're going to want to have hands that, like, uh, once pre-flop raise or checks, and you're out of position, you're going to want to have hands that bet the turn, and hands that check and call, and hands that bluff, and hands that value bet. And, and you're going to need a way to figure out what hands go where. Which hands do you put each button? No, not button. Well, maybe, I guess you could say that. Like, which hands go under the fold button, or the call button, or the check button. But I meant bucket. And, uh, guys, seriously, it might not seem like a big deal to you right now. But it really is a big deal. Or it's going to become a big deal. And I want you to don't ignore this. You know, don't just tune it out because because it's some magic trick. And it is. It's a it's a damn it's a shitty magic trick. You know, like, guys, the idea of learning, the idea of getting better at something, it's not to make everything more complicated. It's to simplify everything. God, like that's what it means to learn. You understand? Like, do you understand that? That is what the word means. You're consolidating. You're, you're taking big groups of uh, apparently discombobulated, chaotic information, and you're looking for an order to all of it. And why? Why do you want to find this order? So that you can break it into little groups, little associated groups, and store it in chunks that are efficiently put in your brain where they belong, physically and mentally. The idea of learning is to make things easier. God, that's what it means. That's what it means. 
Like what happens when you learn to, to skate? Skating gets easier. What if you learn, what if you get better at skating? It gets easier, -er, right? Like what if you learn a new language? When you first start learning, it's hard. What happens when you learn more? It gets easier. Damn it, guys. You know, I get really, it's just like, Jesus. I mean, just look at, just think about it. Just, I mean, I understand. Sometimes people don't see things, and you have to have them pointed out to you. I mean, I didn't understand any of this. I mean, it's not like I came out of the womb understanding this stuff. But the thing that frustrates me is once it's once somebody points directly at it, if it if you're being honest and you're being open, if you're programmed to receive, you'll get this. I'm I'm confident. If you have an IQ that's over a hundred. I assume that almost everybody that is watching this video, I mean, maybe everybody that got to this point in the video does, you know, like you're at least on the, you're probably north of average, right? I think average is like 90, 95. If you have an IQ that's in the three-digit club, and you probably do, then you ought to be able to get this. And if you're not getting it, it's because you, I, I believe truly, that it's because of an ego attachment. It's because you have an emotional attachment to this concept. Or it's because somebody, you no, know, that's still an emotional attachment. It is, it's an ego attachment. I want to tell you the magic trick, okay? So first of all, let's do the non-magic trick version. If we're not using a magic trick, if we're actually trying to figure out why we ought to bet, what, what should that reason where those reasons that there are to bet help us to do. Win money at poker, you know, according to the rules of the game. How do you do that? Well, you get the best hand to showdown, or you become the last live player in the hand. H how could that not be reflected in the strategy? I mean, it must be. It must be. Has to be. There is not a strategy that doesn't reflect the rules of the game that it's applying to, that it applies to, unless it's not a real or if it's a bad strategy or incomplete. This is that the, you build pots when you think you're likely to win them. Is that value betting? No, 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 no. It's not value betting. All of that has to be just jettisoned. Get rid of it. It's not going to help you. It's and it is going to hurt you. Like, yeah, I mean, it's a shortcut, sure, but it's so limited in, in its scope. It's so, it's, it, it's not going to make the journey with you. You know, if you really want to understand this, like, at a high level, like, if you really want to become, like, a, I don't know, like, a poker philosopher, a poker theologian, a poker physicist, right? Because this game is a very complicated, very complex mathematical structure. It's not that unlike when you create a mathematical structure that is um, that has defined rules that work and it creates a complex bunch of happenings and occurrences and things that you can do and things that you can't do, things that you should do, things that you shouldn't do, things that are best, things that are not best. If you have a, a truly consistent version of something like that, like a game, right? A complicated game. It's not that dissimilar from physics. It's not that dissimilar from the universe that you live in right now. I mean, you have rules. You have, like, the laws of physics. You even have ways to understand it that, that are very easy to use. Like, there's a useful analogy. Uh, let's see, which, which, which am I thinking of? If you're looking at the physics of the real natural world, you might look at it in relativistic terms. Like relativity is one of the big paradigms for, it, it's not necessarily like that that's how the universe works. It's a method that helps you to uh, interface with reality. Like your brain can use the concepts of relativity to interact with the idea of the universe. It doesn't mean that the universe was like relativistic exactly or as such or on purpose or anything like that. It just means it's a very good way to look at the things that are going on. Um, and it works. And it holds. 
and even the places where it breaks down into like these weird infinities and singularities, nature actually has them. So it's a very apt metaphor, but it is a metaphor. Relativity is a metaphor, or an analogy, or a tool to examine uh, reality as such. Well, and, and so is, um, and, and so is uh, what's the other big thing that's happened? Quantum mechanics, quantum theory. They're, they're looking at very different, in, in fact, you could probably make a very good argument that at least right now, they're incompatible. Like in a way that probably they can't both be right. Um, but they both seem very right. They both make very good predictions. They both, they're like the most powerful explanatory tools that physicists have. And they don't necessarily play well together. Which I mean hints at the fact that they're not like, it's not like the rules of the universe exactly. It's just they're good ways to interpret the way that the universe more or less works. Poker has that too. It's got the microcosmic scale and the macroscopic scale. And they don't always work together. Um, but they usually do. Or, or you can make them. You, know, you can think of them in ways that do. Um, that's the fundamental theorem of poker and game theory, optimal or GTO concepts, right? And it's like, um, GTO is the macroscopic view of strategy. And the fundamental theorem of poker works on the microscopic level. It's like a microcosm versus a macrocosm. Very much like, well, relativity and uh, quantum mechanics. So th this is not like, I'm not just uh, waxing poetic, or this isn't mental masturbation. I I'm trying to get you to a place. And in order for you to follow me into this place, you have to leave some of these illusions you have to set some of them down. Or I'm going to point in a direction. Maybe you don't ever do like private lessons with me or read my book that I'm going to write. Or, which is one of the reasons I'm taking a break from some things. But maybe, maybe you and I never talk to each other. But I want you, the person that's stuck with this this whole time, to understand that this is, there's truth here. You know, there's really truth here. And it really matters. Value. Fold that. I mean, I guess you could kind of look at it like that. Value bluff, huh? -uh. No. Value bluff protection, enough of it. It's just silly. The rules of the game are you win the pot. What do you win? You win the pot. When? When do you win it? When everybody folds but you. Or when you get the showdown with the best hand. So what should the object of your bets be? I mean, good lord. What should your bets be doing if you know the object of the game is to maximize your chance of winning the pots and making them as big as they can be when you win? Then, then what should your bets do? Um, that, you know? <laughs> like, God, you know? That's what they should do. They should do that. They should build pots that you're likely to win. Or, how, or, or they could uh, increase the size of the pots when you're already likely to win them. Or they could um, make you more likely to win them. What else would they do? Like, in order for there to be another thing, there'd have to be another rule or another way to win or something. Or bonus points. This is what would it, this is what it would take. In order for protection to actually be a real thing, it would take <clears throat> you getting bonus points for betting the best hand. You don't. Guys, you do. That is not a reason to bet. Having the best hand is not a reason to bet. You do not get paid to have the best hand. You especially do not get paid to have the best hand on the flop that's unlikely to stay the best hand by the river. That, that's like the opposite of a good reason to bet. In fact, like the solvers will tell you that. That was something that a lot of people were surprised by. But solvers will very often, instead of trying to bet when they might be best, but probably, you know, like what a lot of protection bets end up doing is they cause you to make inefficient ranges. But the thing that's inefficient about them is that you end up betting hands that are probably best right up until you get called. You know, that's like the opposite of a good idea. That's exactly what you don't want. 
You don't want to build the pots you're probably going to lose. Good God. Just stop. I'm telling you the truth. You can trust me on this. If you don't understand it, see this as something you don't understand. Have some humility here. I've been thinking about this for decades. Like I'm, you know, 40, and I started playing when I was like not 18, so I've been thinking about this particular issue for at least a decade. Build pots you're likely to win, make you more likely to win. Does that mean value? Like if we're building a pot that we're likely to win, I mean you can call it value, but it's not what most people mean when they say value bet, because when most people use the word value bet, they're referring to betting what is the best hand. Um, and that's not what I mean by building pots you're likely to win. I mean, sometimes it is. Sometimes your hand is very strong and you can get called by second best hands. And those second best hands are unlikely to win at showdown. And you're likely to get to showdown. And sometimes that's exactly what it means. So your value bet. You're going to have the best hand and build. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. You're going to uh, build. You're going to build a pot because you're a favorite to win that pot. That's what it really means. And sometimes the reason you're a favorite to win that pot and the reason you're able to build it is because you probably have the best hand that's likely to stay the best hand. Like, likely to stay the best hand is part of this equation. And it certainly doesn't work the opposite way. So building a pot when we're a favorite to win it can mean, but does not always mean, that we have the best hand and it's likely to stay the best hand and our opponent is going to call the second best hands. But that's what most people mean when they say value, but they mean something like that. Um, but sometimes we're, we just have a really sick double barrel, and we can bet and build a pot on the flop and take it on the turn. Sometimes we have a player that just like folds to see that's way too often, and we can three bet and pre-flop and build a pot and just take it down on the flop way more often than we ought to. So there we're building pots when we're a favorite to win them at or by showdown. Um, the other thing we do is we make ourselves more likely to win the pot. And uh, that's what we do with our bets, I should say. And there's other things you do besides bet. Sometimes you chat, sometimes you call. But when you bet, these are the things. Um, so does that mean bluff? Make us more likely to win? Are we bluffing? Well, I mean, no. Like, does it mean that we're getting fold equity? Yeah, it's fold equity. But see, it, we're, we're betting just because there's nothing better for us to do. Like, we have a hand that just benefits from the fold equity we can generate by betting. Uh, maybe it's got, like, good equity when called by exactly the range of hands that would call a bet, and it doesn't do so good against all of the hands that would not call a bet. And so we want to bet, because that actually can work in both ways. It will build a pot against the hands we're a favorite against, and it will get the hands we're not such a favorite against to fold. But it, it's just those things. It's just those two things. Um, it's not value bet bluff and protection. Just it isn't. It's not. That's a very clunky. Let, let's just look at an example, and I'm gonna shut this down and close it out and end it. I hope that you enjoyed this journey. It wasn't too uh, too difficult to stay with me. Um, okay, let's just look at an example. So you're the pre-flop caller against the player. Let's just say you play heads up against this guy all the time. And so in this particular hand, your pre-flop caller out of position. You got to the turn after the flop went check, check. So villain is pre-flop raiser, and he makes a non-procedural check back. He had a C-bet opportunity on the flop. He didn't take it. He checked back. This happens often. You play this opponent often. And this is a very specific flop texture that you think that, like, you, you better have this one figured out. And so you've been trying to exploit him. You've... Maybe every time he checks back ace x x uh, as preflop raiser, you've tried bombing into him, thinking that he has a very capped and bound range. Um, and sometimes he folds, but like sometimes he calls the flop, but then you bomb again. And sometimes he folds on the on the river, or the turn and river rather. Um, but sometimes he calls the turn and folds the river. Sometimes he calls the turn and calls the river. Sometimes he even checks flop, calls turn, raises the river. You, you really you just can't find a way to exploit him here. So for the time being, you want to, you're doing a lot of work on trying to just be very balanced in this situation until you get a better read or to have a better plan to exploit him. And this exact flop comes up, or maybe you're working off table and you're just trying to 
work on a number of flops and these are going to be some situations you might get into and so you're looking at this ace three ten two tone board so it's ace of diamonds three of diamonds ten of clubs that's the flop it goes chuck chuck okay so now you're trying now you, you feel like you've got all these obvious hands that are definitely going to bet for value all these obvious hands that are definitely going to check but there's a couple you're trying to stay balanced and you have four kind of, I mean it's not exactly four combos the combos are um, there's going to actually be more combos of the pairs than of these exact suited hands but um, by kind of a lot but let's just ignore that for the second just say that we've come up with I mean, like maybe we know what to do with some of our 9-9 nine nine and some of our 7-7 seven seven or maybe we just sometimes three bat nines pre-flops we just we get here somehow with the exact same number of nine nine seven seven five four and queen nine or you know just play along okay so on the turn of eight of clubs or you can even say before the turn even comes out what is your plan more than likely going to be with these with these cards well do we want to so we have to put these hands somewhere we have to do something with them we should check some hands. We have to check some hands. And we have to bet some hands. Well, which ones of these hands require the most protection? Like, can you protect queen high? I mean, yeah, sure. If your opponent has jack high, he's got two, two or more live cards against you, you could be protecting it, I guess, if that's what you mean, getting worse hands to fold. If, if getting worse hands to fold is what you mean by protection, though, then it's just stupid as such. It's inherently dumb. Um... And I just think like a lot of times that's what your bets are going to accomplish if you have this as one of your motivating factors. It's going to cause you to bet. Um, so of these hands, pocket nines, pocket sevens, five, four suited. So you've got like a straight flush draw. Or here you've got like a different straight flush draw. Which hands do you want to bet? Let's say you have to bet two of these hands every time. And the other two you have to check every time. Well, which ones do better against the range of hands that calls us? And which one does worse at winning a showdown? Well, queen high and five high don't win very often at showdown. But when we bet them and get called, we have a very good chance of still winning. Even against like the slow plays, even against the hands that are going to raise us on the river, we can make the damn nuts with these hands. But right now, we don't have anything. We're happy as can be if this guy folds pocket twos with either of these hands, but we don't want him to fold pocket twos with these hands. We're, we're not dead when he calls with uh, ace three against these hands, but we are pretty damn close to dead when he calls with ace three when we have one of these hands. So which ones should we bet, be betting? And how low do I have to make the pocket pair before you actually want to protect it? There's no such thing as that. It's a non-starter. It's a non-sequitur. There is no pair... <laughs> There is no way that the pair eventually gets to some situation where now you should start betting it for protection. And if you don't believe that, ask questions in the comments. And I will I will focus my attention to this video and I will try to answer it. I think that's going to have to do it for now, guys. Uh, Navanada, no limit hold them. Uh, until next time, namaste, bitches. Um, yeah, peace. Words to your mothers. Word out and such.